Yes, guys, another day, another episode. I am flying right now. I've got so much episodes in the vault. Today's one I'm actually looking forward to. Uh, main reason being is something that's been long overdue. I think about when I started in COVID 2020, which is actually mad because coming up to three years, um, this episode I actually wanted to do. And the truth is, I, I, I'll tell you guys the truth, but before we even get into that, would you like to introduce yourself for those that may not know you? Yeah, my name's Darren G. I'm from the city of Liverpool. I pr- promote a message called Choose a Life, Not a Knife, which is trying to influence the kids away from a similar life to what I led. And that's me in a nutshell. Yeah, nah, I love the message. It's very catchy as well. It's one of those you can't forget. L5 it's as well, right? That's L5 Alive, Choose yeah. a Life, Not a Knife. L5 is the brand. Mm. Choose a Life, Not a Knife is the message. The message, yeah. Makes sense. As I was saying, I wanted to get you on back in the day. And I remember, I'll be honest, I, I don't even know if you remember. I remember me speaking to you and you was like, yeah, if you can just sort out this and that. Bro, I'll be honest, I couldn't sort out this and that. So I actually couldn't get you. But I understand you would have to go from A to B. You're doing so what me, I yeah. do, every, every podcast they go on, I just say, look, I'm not earning an awful lot of money. If mm. you want me to present your platform, mm. gives the travelling costs, which is either a train ticket yep. or a full tank of petrol. That's yep. it. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's more than fair. You're coming down here. And I appreciate that. But I was so broke, bro, that truth is, I didn't have it in my pocket to give you. Do you get what I mean? But um, obviously now... Yeah, I'm older, things are working. So yeah, no, it's good. So you grew up in Liverpool, right? Yeah. Right. How was life for you growing up? The same as every council estate, isn't it? Rough. Mm. You've got to fight for everything you want. You've got to um you've got to participate in certain activities to eat well, dress well. Mm. It's just what it, it's same, it doesn't matter where you are in the country, all council estates are the same. You thrive through you, you thrive through crime. Mm. So that's what my childhood was about, violence and crime. What was your relationship like, uh, relationship like with like your family, parents, siblings, etc.? The siblings were tight when we were younger because we had to be because we had an um, we had an alcoholic dad that was very brutal and very um, violent towards us as kids. So when it's never been good with the father, I don't speak to him at all no more. So mm. that the childhood was very traumatic. Fair enough. I mean, you've gone through your experiences, so if that's how you feel, I don't think yeah. there's anything necessarily wrong with that, you know. Uh, were you a smart kid, like, in school? Were you someone that was smart, I was, ex- I was expelled from school at the age of 12, mate. Okay. So what I did le- you do? I'd thrown a fire extinguisher at the head teachers. Okay. So I just got expelled. I was one of them kids that shouldn't be in that sort of setting to be educated. Mm. You're seeing it more these days. It's, they've got... It's like ADHD or something. You're not, you're not fitting in the normal setup of school mm-hmm. so we just went and settling ended up getting kicked out and that, that that was me then within a year later i'm committing crime mm. so you never you know well i actually didn't myself if i'm being honest speaking to my 12 year old self i didn't know what the fuck i wanted to do what about yourself did you ever just okay you've been kicked out of school did you say like literally my life is just crime i'm just getting it however i'm gonna get it or did you want to be anything 12 12 year olds back then aren't like the 12 year olds now, is it? Like the 12 year old kids now, they're on the ball. They've got intelligence, they've got a brain, they know what they want to do themselves. Back then, it was just, you're just flowing. It was only like 15, 16 where you started really contemplating where you're going next. Yeah. But if you never never had the opportunities from 12 to 16, you were just lost Mm. in the community with. So I get expelled from school. The only people on the estate are the kids that's already left school. Right. So I'm I'm 12, 13, mixing with 16, 17 or 18 year old kids who are consuming cannabis, committing crimes. Mm. And it was the natural flow for me to fall into that life of petty crime, yeah. then violent crime and then organised crime. Was that your whole family or was that just you? Like between your siblings and stuff? No, I actually it, don't know. Initially, it was just me and my brother, me right. and Danny. Okay. And then after me and Danny... The, the youngest Stephen fell into crime. Right. The youngest never, and the oldest never really went down the path we went down. Right. Fair enough. So for you, uh, cause I saw that you went to jail. Cause I feel like people have heard your story loads of times. You've obviously done podcasts so many times, so it probably sounds repetitive, and I actually do want to come more to current affairs. But before we get to that, um, obviously you've been kicked out of school at 12. You end up going down a life of crime. Um, what point do you end up like, get going to prison and stuff like that. How did you go from just... What was, like, you were probably doing petty crimes, I assume, like, little was robberies and stuff, drug dealing? Well, where I'm from, Liverpool 5, it's, it's where Anfield's football ground is. So okay. we started off 
every match day we used to have thousands of cars coming to park outside the ground so the supporters could watch the match. So okay. we started robbing the cars. Right. So I, I got kicked out of school. Within two years of me and being kicked out of school, I'm in prison. So cool. I, get, I get section 20. What's that, I don't know. It's bottling someone with intent. Okay, fair so enough. So I got a set, I got fifteen months detained, which is because I'm a juvenile. It means you do the full full fifteen months. Right. So it was like near the end of going on to the age of fifteen, and then I was in prison till sixteen. Right. Okay. So those were. Would you say they were kind of like somewhat petty crimes compared to like what you went to jail for, like a murder? There's levels to it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's all. It's, it's, it was in, like stealing from cars is petty. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, that side. Of you know, it. but if you're kicking a front door and to steal a car, that's well, then it's levels. not petty. No, you know? exactly. So the levels you're on about do still exist. Mm -hmm. What I was doing was I went from stealing from cars to stealing from public houses, mm -hmm. stealing from off licenses like treasures. You know, escalated each year. Yeah, yeah. And then eventually, you're just doing too much jail for your commercial burglaries. And while you're doing your jail, you're seeing lads in your area that's got nothing about them tapping into the drug world, mm. not going to prison, making loads of money. So for you as a, as a criminal, you automatically think, well, fuck this, I'm going to tap into that world because I'm doing too much jail in this sort of, doing them crimes, I'm doing too much jail, so I want a bit of that. 100%. And I think, you know, the equivalent to that is, is like now... People don't really drug deal. They do a lot of like fraudulent stuff. So while the drug dealers are there, you know, maybe getting stabbed or shot or raided and stuff, people are just doing credit card stuff. Not that I'm promoting crime, but I'm just showing it, crime evolves. Yeah, time. definitely. Do you know what I mean? You'll have, you'll have a lot of people that's been in the drug world for a long time mm. going over into the fraud. Yeah. You know, like white collar fraud. Exactly. Tax invasion. Stuff. Because when you work out what you can get money to the risk. bird... It, it, it don't even make sense, that's literally. It, yeah. um, what age were you then when you decided to move from that to that? Late teens. Mm. 19, touching 20. Yeah. And so it, it was difficult for us because we, we'd we um, upset a lot of the... Lo what it used to be like, you'd have an area locked... You'd have a, an area and you'd have a certain group who'd lock down that area. Of course, yeah. And if they seen you as a threat, they wouldn't supply you. Mm the things you needed to get on your feet in that area. Right. So it was very difficult for us to get hold of brown, crack, mm. white, whatever you want to call it. It was difficult for us to see the older lads and they wouldn't give us it. Right. So we had to, we started looking at these people that were selling drugs mm. and taxing them. And all that done, it just blacklisted us from yeah. any sort of, being a part of any sort of the groups above us, they weren't going near us because we'd robbed half of their little runners. Right. So that's really how the drug wars kind of start, is that it's one person sees kind of a threat. Not maybe a physical threat, but like they're taking over this area or they're getting better products and et cetera. So then the only way is either you don't sell or you eliminate each other. Which there's only, fucked, there's only two ways you can take over, yeah. isn't there? You've, had, you've either got a 10 out of 10 product or you've got a fear factor. Yeah. They're the only two ways you can go into an area and dominate it. Mm. You can take it with the product or you take it by fear. Mm. Cool. What generation was this? Like, what was it? 80s, 90s? What, nah, was this? this is um, 2000s. 2000s. Early 2000s. Mm. Okay, fair enough. And back then, was there a lot of like more family stuff or was it like... That's what it was. Family it was more families, stuff. right? It weren't really... Like, yeah. I, I believe up here, up like down south London areas like such as this. Areas. You've, you've got... Um, it's always been postcode elements for mm. years and years and years before it even... It's like that in Liverpool now. Right. But 2000s, 90s, it was dominant crime families. Right. Yeah, where, like, the surname actually holds weight. And yeah, stuff. you'd had families that dominated certain areas for decades and they've always had a stronghold on what's going on in that area and they, they, they'd be, like, the peace. So it was all different, but then when my generations kicked in, we didn't... We didn't give a fuck about them yeah you know we started a new type of era in the city of Liverpool so them big crime families that are normally could normally tell other kids pack that in <laughs> when they tried to tell us to pack that in it was fuck you who do you think you are yeah and that sort of started funny how times change right yeah well that's it well it just gets worse yeah because getting worse now yeah people do not give the kids today 
unfortunately do not care about what you've done back in the day, who you are, who your brother is, who your uncle is. They don't give a shit. What are you doing now? Is more of how they think, you know. Well, well, years ago when it was families, you know, the fam, the same families used to have the security firms in the area. They used to have the doors on the clubs. Like literally around the and area. And they, they could get on the phone and call it under men out. Mm. And everyone would go, look at that, that's a firm, that. But these days with the youth, just like us, if you call your 50 men out, I'll pull my thing out, what's got 12 men in it, and it'll just fucking ruin it. <laughs> and that's Literally. the mindset now. Yeah, it's fucked. Don't give a fuck how many of you are, I'll just come with me thing and put you to bed. Yeah. That's the mindset now. Nah, for real. And the old school can't deal with that mindset. So what you've got now is you've got the old school drug dealers mm. who are making money, who don't participate in violence or fear, but they need that around them. So they'll identify game kids. You know, your good car twockers or your good bike riders. The older up there will identify them as game kids, knowing I can give this kid a piece, give mm. him a few grand, and he'll Do protect yeah. my interests on the street. Mm. That's mad. Yeah, has Liverpool always been um, like that then? With like crime families, obviously you're saying now it's gone more towards like postcode and areas and stuff, but no, has Liverpool got, always been that way? It's always been organised crime. Yeah. Always. And it's always been crime families. And when I was saying there that it's all changed, it's only changed on the ground. Mm. So at the top, in the hierarchy levels, you've still got these crime families controlling right. the majority of what's going on. But the way they used to have certain people to give the swag to on the streets, now because the, there's that much swag and there's that much money, they're just giving the swag to anyone. Right, right. And leaving them kids on the streets to deal with the shit themselves. So if them kids have got a problem with them kids, mm. they'll kill each other, but they're still getting the swag off them top bit, and they yeah. don't give a fuck. What happens? Yeah, they're not asked. So it's mm. it's organised up there, but very disorganised down here. Not a big fracture, right? Yeah. So what does, like, how can that change in Liverpool? If it's always been like that, you know, some places they go through waves <clears> where <throat> you might have a 10-year stretch where it's just loads of gun crime, 10-year stretch where there's loads of knives. Then the next 10 years is fine. And then it comes back. Like, what can Liverpool, what, what, what do they do above to try to combat that? Can they do anything? Do no. Think? No. They can't do nothing. They could do if they wanted, and that's simply stop bringing drugs and guns in. Mm. But there's that much money in it. They're never going to do it. And what happens is, if, if I commit an act of violence, you'll have someone who's, who's sitting there and thinking, our act of violence has got to be more louder than that one. Yeah. You know, so they get more of the faith. So if you've got a body count, so look, say I, I'm in a state in Liverpool. Mm hmm and I put two people to bed in the last two years, mm -hmm. that instantly drives traffic towards your business in dealing drugs. Mm -hmm. You'll have all the little weak dealers around there coming to you to purchase the drugs off you because you've got that fear factor. Mm -hmm. You get a body count, basically, and that's what the kids are chasing. Yeah, literally. Because once you've got the body counts, Respect your graph, comes your graph phone starts ringing off its head, yeah. the money starts flowing in, mm -hmm. that notoriety kicks in. But just like anyone, the last two, three years, and they're gone. They either double figures, lifed off, or put to bed themselves. Yeah, exactly, because you ended up... How, how long did you do in jail? I, I done. I got 18 years and done 12 off it. So I was okay. lucky. Yeah. I was, so that wouldn't have been... Cause you know now they'll give like a minimum. Yeah, for term. the same sentence now, you get a 35 breath for the for, for what I got at 18 for back then. Yeah, because gun murders, they give way higher for... like, And you know even now, if you don't even kill someone, if you just shoot them... Yeah. You're getting like 30 yeah, years. If you, if, you if you discharge a firearm in a public place, it's long. you're getting double figures. And it's crazy. Like most time it's it used to be IPPs, but it's yeah. sort of similar to that now. I literally I've no, I know two people, it's not both I'm just being honest. I know two people, one got longer for attempted murder, and the person's alive, than the actual person that murdered, bro. And they were both gun related. But that's how crazy it is now, like compared to obviously back then. Well, you still get a long time, but not like now. Well, I had, when I was like 18, 19, one of our boys was being shot dead. Mm -hmm. you know? So this is before 2000, it's like five, six years before 2000. Right. And the kids that shot him dead got 12-year recommendation yeah, man. for the murder with a firearm. How old were they? The kid was 18, he was shot dead, and the kids that killed him were 21. Kid that, okay. Kid that killed got, him 21, They, yeah, they yeah. got a 12-year recommendation for that gun crime. Mm -hmm. And then... Ten years later, for the same type of murder, you were getting a twenty rec. Yeah. And then ten years later, for the same type of murder, right. you're getting a thirty rec. 
Mm. And now there's individuals being in 40s, 42s. Disgusting. Yeah, it's mad. Because even, I think that, and I don't know, you, you let me know what you think, but I feel like back in the day, I'm 25 now. So when I was growing up, I was still seeing a lot of stuff that were going on and when people were doing things. And I was seeing people kill people, bro, and get like no time for it. So in my head, if I'm being honest to you, it was translating to me like, okay, so I'm either going to die out here and someone's going to be out in like 10, 12 years or I can protect myself and do maybe a certain time and at least I'm still alive. I've probably got some friends inside. It, it, I prefer my life than that. Obviously now that's not my mentality. I just stay out of the way. But that was how I was looking at it, bro. I've known so much people that have died and bro, they're killers are outside right now. Yeah. That's, Chilling. There's, there's, you know, there's, there's body counts all over Liverpool. Yeah. Yeah. So even for yourself, so what led to you going to jail for 18 years? You never actually done it, right? As far as I'm aware, it was like ordered or something. No, like mine was conspiracy to me there. Okay. So, so just to make it um, more relatable, mm. pre-2005, for a conspiracy to murder, you could get a discretionary life or a long, determinate sentence. Right. After 2005, for conspiracy to murder, it was mandatory sentence. So my crime was done in 2-4. Okay. I weren't convicted till 2-7. But the judge decided to sentence me Basically. on when my crime was committed, which ah. was under the old law, which was discretionary life, which mm-hmm. means it's the judge's discretion whether he gives you a life sentence or not. And that goes by your history, mm-hmm. your violent offences, what you've been convicted for in the past. Mm-hmm. And if you've been convicted for various offences, he would have given you a discretionary life. Right. But because I hadn't, he gave me a long determinant of 18 years. And that stemmed from, basically, uh, you, like you've had these old school, and we were the new school, basically. So you've had 46-year-old men, mm. He was at the area on lock for years with the swag, bringing the swag in for years and years and years. We're just getting out there. We start locking down the graft in a different way. You know, we start moving differently. You, you normally you used to, you used to have a phone. Mm-hmm. You let the punter ring your phone. You tell him to wait there ten minutes. You fly around. You see him. We just cut all phones off and stood on the Grasdale Estate twenty four seven, right, and sold it like it was a shop. And because we'd done that, we took everyone's custom because the punters that were waiting up there for 15 minutes for their dealer could just walk to our, our streets in five minutes, get the shit and be gone. Mm. So it caused a lot of friction with the other dealers. And although we're only out there to make money, the other dealers are getting jealous and envious about the money we're making. And they try and step on your toes and they're stealing your punters. And in that world, you can't let that happen. So we, we eventually started damaging other dealers, locking the area down. The old school have recognised this and tried to give us swag. Right. You know, tried to give us the shit that we were dishing out, but we refused it and it's just gone wrong. So on the 6th of April, these, I won't name them, but the, the four, they were millionaires. They mm. didn't have to graft, but they were just greedy. I was 24 at the time. They're 46. So right. that's, it, there was a big gap in how long they'd been grafting. So yeah, 22 years, literally. They've decided to get me took out. They've hired this gunman from down here, and I say a soldier he was. Put him on me, and on the 6th of April, 2004, there's four of us in a galaxy. Me, my little brother, and two of my mates. Mm. We're in the galaxy. We come out of our close where, where we operated from, and we get pounced on by this... SAS gunman he was. He, he, were, he weren't like me. Let's go and get him and do him on the corner. It was a proper Trend. cold-blooded yeah. fucking, you know, on it. And he just pounced on the passenger seat, filled me mate up with eight bullets. I've said it all before. It's out there, mm. but I'd say it's fresh context, so of I'm course. just giving you a little idea of what it was about. Yeah. So the gunman's jumped on the galaxy to the passenger, let a shot off. I've told me little brother to let up um, get away. He's let the clutch out too fast. We stalled on the spot. The gunman's ran up to the passenger seat believing it's me. Oh. But I'd just swapped seats with one of the other lads in the car. So he's got in the car. The gunman's waist deep, working down the sternum. And as the young Craig's trying... He's only 18, Craig, at the time. As he's trying to get away across the centre console, he's following him in, not letting him go. So all them bullets that were going through Craig are coming out his back and going into the driver, which was my youngest brother. Mm. So within a few weeks of that, 
we have been informed that a certain individual was involved in the crime. This fellow was called David Regan. Mm. So I've just done what you're meant to do in that situation when you're on the streets, sought, re sought revenge. And we, when you're listening to that rap music years ago, like retaliation is a must. Just that was the it. mindset. Mm. So it was like retaliation is a must. They've tried to kill me. They've killed him. One of them's got to go. So on the 18th of May, same year, that was the 6th of April. Yeah. So 18th of May, we've retaliated. The fellow we've targeted was a 37-year-old man called David Regan. And it was... 3 p.m. on the 18th of May, sunny day, daylight. We've just got in two cars, went down to the garage where he owned, like a car wash garage that he owned. He was just sat there. Gunman jumps out, hunts him down, puts him down. Mm. Get in the car, get off. Two days later, I'm arrested and then in custody. Wow. So how do you get caught? How, how did they yeah, catch you? Hearsay evidence. Okay, so they've actually had evidence. It's just conspiracy. There, you're saying, right? there was no direct evidence at all. It was hearsay evidence. Mm. Yeah. So, Did, so, so what? Someone was basically telling at that point in time. So what happened is a, a woman. So I'm arrested initially for the murder. Okay. But there was absolutely no evidence to chat and um, charge me for the murder. So what they done to keep me in custody? They charged me with threats to kill against the victim of the murder. Right. And whilst I'm in custody on the threat to kill. They've then went around and, and saw witnesses to anything they could. Six weeks later, charged with conspiracy to murder with others unknown. So they charged me by myself for conspiracy to murder with others unknown. Right. I was in custody for six months. I'm getting a not guilty. The day before the trial was meant to start, and it's a tactic that the police use up and down the country to mm. keep you in custody for longer. The day before the trial was meant to start, they've raided the houses of other lads. Right. Arrested them, come to my court and said there's been developments, so you're back on me, man, for six months. Six months, yeah. So basically, they just built a case till eventually there was, four, there was five of us in the dock, me and four Codies. We have a 28 week trial, hung jury, two of me Codies get acquitted. We go back within two weeks for the 18 week trial, the other Codies get acquitted. How long was the first one, sir? 28 weeks. Oh, shit. That's long, man. Long every day going from strange ways, losing weight, air falling out, stress through the roof. I just beat yeah. another five or six charges. You know what I mean? And then I had the conspiracy to murder charge to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. It's long. Twenty eight week trial, two cold D's go, eighteen week trial, other two other two cold D's go at the end of the prosecution case. They sever they sever me from them. So on the 18 week trial, they let evidence in that they shouldn't let in, which was biased towards me. Mm. So to make it unbiased towards the other two defendants, they severed me from that trial. I get you. Let that 18 week trial continue with them two. And they got acquitted. Then I've gone to trial for myself for two days. And the only evidence there was hearsay. Double hand hearsay. So basically, they like to prove a motive in most murder cases. And when my boy's being shot, I've allegedly gone to his mum and said it was blah, 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 blah. And when she's being emotional, when your son gets murdered, you get a PLO assigned to the family, which is a police liaison officer, you know, who helps them through the process yep. with the grieving process. And while she's being emotional and broke down, she said to the PLO, Darren said it was A, B and C. Mm. And on that A, B, and C list is the victim's name. Right. So I've gone to court. Uh, my boy's mum has stood in the dock and said, no, I never said that to the PLO. Ba -ba -bam. So they made her a volatile witness, jogged her on, and then just used the police officer's evidence as the only evidence in my two-day trial and convicted me on it. That's crazy. That's actually <coughs> mad. So he's used, they've used the statement... From her that she's saying ain't even true. Yeah. But removed her and kept the statement. See what there. the prosecution done, they used me mum as a prosecution witness. Right. So instead of me woman and I just let it happen. You know, she's in my corner. She's mm. my boy's mother. She's in my corner. But the prosecution have called her as a witness. So when they've called her, they're expecting her to say A, B, and C. Of course. But she switched on them and said, No, I never said that. The police officer's lying. So the judge, the Mad Judge Madison in the trial, has turned around and made it into a volatile witness, 
and told the judge and um, the jury to discredit her evidence, not not take her on board, and then just add the hearsay off the police woman saying that this woman told me this, and he took that as truth. Well, I was convicted, but just like many of the lads now, you are banned to rights, mm. but you've got fuck all to lose. So the ad- the advice I was getting off my barristers from the first trial right to the very end mm. was you getting a thirty rec. It's borderline contract killing and the judge is going to slam you because it's gun crime. So I'm getting told and I've prepared myself for a 30. But then he just, the, the, the judge has just switched it all on its head and said, I'm sentencing you under the old law. And yeah, because yeah, before 2005. Yeah. He you, so you've done it in 2004. Yeah. But then it happened in... It the happened, in, it happened 2007, in 2004. I was convicted in 2007. But he judged you but by the because two, because my crime months. was committed in 2004. Yeah. He shocked everyone in the courtroom. Yeah, that saved, that saved you, boy. He gave me, gave me an opportunity. But That's good. That's because if I, would have been, if I would have been given the correct advice, go guilty, I would have got out at eight or seven years to it. Oh, right? really? Is that, but that because was I was given, Yeah, but because I was given the advice that you yeah, get a 30 rep, mm. I've had to go not guilty and drag the deceased family through the bullshit. Really? You know, the trauma and all this. Shit. So, so when you see these kids now who are getting 30 wrecks for fucking silly daft gun crime murders. It's mad, bro. The band to rights. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter who the victims are. In their mind, it's survival mode. 100%. I'll just go anyway in case something happens. Yeah, man. And I mean, I don't think people realise how long 30 years is. I can't even imagine how long 12 years is, bro. It's long. I can't even imagine that. It was long back then, mm. but you'll have kids with the amount of sentence that they're out now, like thirties, twenty fives. Yeah. Smart. The kids aren't really contemplating how long that is. How long it is. I haven't even been alive for thirty years, bro. That's what I'm saying. Like I had to sit there the other day and I thought I've not even been alive for thirty years. So imagine spending that trapped. Well, look, so so my codies that got acquitted. Mm. Three of them are life off. Oh really? So they ended up getting caught in on, something on a, else on a different murder. Eight That's what happens. Months later. That 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 is one thing that happens. I think, especially if you get away with certain things, you think you're invincible to a case like you won't get caught. So you end up just That's doing the means. same so shit. Every everything everything's a blessing if you're good. Yeah, definitely. So I mean, for yourself, would you say that um, jail kind of saved you in a, to an extent? Well, if I wouldn't have, if I were, if I wasn't incarcerated on that one, I mm. definitely would have been on that one. On right. a couple of more, probably. Because mm. that's what was happening at that time. It was just a crazy... You know, it was like a, people call it a gang war. Yeah. It was just Tip madness. People dying, doors going through, people getting caught. It's all the madness that goes with that lifestyle. Mm. So for yourself, when you've had 18, what, what goes through your head? I was buzzing. Mm. You know, I've prepared myself mentally for 30. two and a half years to take a 30 wreck on the chin. Mm. You know, I'd already put it into me mindset that I'm never getting out. This yeah. is me now. So all of a sudden, I've got a release date. Oh, it was the best thing in the world. Yeah. I went from, say, 12 stone, stressed out, you know, where you're not training properly, you're not sleeping because of the stress of the trials. As mm-hmm. soon as I got me determined a sentence, two months later, I've put two and a half stone back on. I'm training, I'm yeah. sleeping. I had a choice to make, you know, do I want to get out? After a decade, being able to have an ad on. Yeah, yeah. Or do you want to get out looking rough as fuck? So I just knocked <laughs> yeah. all the weed on the head, knocked all the smoking, mm. tapped into the gym, yeah. education, yeah. and just went through my prison, yeah. prepared myself for that release date. That makes sense. I, and most people should do that. You've actually gone there as a way to kind of escape the bullshit and to develop yourself and prepare yourself for... Well, that's what you meant to do. But, yeah. but, but as I say, lad, um, the amount of young men that are tapping into that lifestyle, the fast life. They want the cars, they want the watches, the beers, they want the drugs, every fucking this. Yeah. It doesn't last forever. And they end up just wrote off. They end up in the system. And they're just lifed off. You've only got to... If you're from the type of places I'm from, whether it's London, Birmingham, Manchester, anywhere in the country, if you're from the gaffs we're from, you've only got to look out in front of you to see yeah. what's the wrong path to go down. Definitely. Do you understand what I'm saying? 100%, bro. Open your eyes and look in front of you and look how many people on your estate are lifed off. Mm. Look how many people are dead. Yeah. Look how many people haven't got a beard still because yeah, they've chose that path. 
Mm. You know that path there they took. So why are you going to decide as a young man with half a fucking brain on you mm. to take that path? So looking back now at yourself, do you feel like you could have gone down another path? Do you know some people, they're like, oh, I like, like I believe you as a product of your environment. You've grown up around something. So naturally you've um, adapted to it. But at the same time, you said you had siblings that weren't involved in it. Looking back at yourself now, do you think that was avoidable? There was opportunities for the authorities mm. to prevent me going any deeper into that lifestyle and they never. So the first sentence I ever got, that was an opportunity for the system to have a major effect upon me and my mindset, mm. which would have prevented me going prison again. But years ago, all of a sudden, he made prison from being brutal and not nice places to be to all of a sudden, this is comfy, I've got a PS, I've got my own clothes in, I've got my own... Da, 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 da. And when they've done that, they've lessened the deterrent. Yeah. So when you've got kids now going into jail or for whatever hours they're landing in the jail and instantly there's five of the boys on the landing. Yeah. And it's just like being at home. It literally, yeah. So there's, yeah. Not, there's not a deterrent. And no. what I keep on saying to the lads who are willing to listen to me... Mm. Look at your prison wings. Look at them. Look what they're full of. They're not full of them educated kids from the rich parents. They're full of our people. Mm. If you, you can go in a local prison and on that first wing you go in, every one of the individuals on there are the boys off our estates. Mm. No one else. And they're just rotting away. People form addictions. Yeah. They, they lose the birds, the family breakdown. Double figures, life's off, never getting out. Not worth it. And they forgot about. Mm. They think they're gonna last forever in that game, and and they just there's not enough people trying to preach down to these kids and saying, look, mm. fuck that life off. Trust me. So Darren G today in 2023, when you look back at that situation um, that led to you even going to jail, do you feel like there was any other way that could have been handled, or do you just feel like it is what it is? But how do you look back at that now as an adult? Because obviously you was quite young then. You've gone to jail. You've had yeah, but what about experience. the mindset I've had now? Mm. Back then, I wouldn't have even participated in any crime. Mm. I would have. I wouldn't have fucked up a school. I would have continued that school. I would have got a school's boring. It's shit. <laughs> it's very hard for school to keep the attention of a youth true. these days, and a lot of them drop out. They start smoking cannabis just like I did. Mm -hmm. And once you've got that little dependency on cannabis, you're sort of chasing a dough so you can supply your fucking cannabis. You've got people willing to be deceitful with you, have you doing bits of madness for you. And then before you know it, you're just caught up in this life. That's routine. Mm -hmm. It's like a routine to you. And any routine you get yourself into, it's very hard to break. Yeah. How is things in Liverpool now, like generally? Because obviously you've had so much history well, there. Well, for, for me, mate, it's it's gone scatty because since I have been released from custody, mm -hmm. I've just turned, um, I've just turned vigilante on them all. Mm. I've, got, I've got out of custody and I'm just looking on our estates and you're seeing single mums with the babies in prams buying coke. You're Crazy. seeing lads that I used to know with decent kids bumming outside the shop with no leg left. I'm hearing about kids being slashed across the face for absolutely fucking half ounce of weed debt and shit like this. And I'm just looking at it and thinking, wow, drugs and the people that peddle them are absolutely destroying everything about our city. Mm. And I'm not long, so I just started with the message, you know, trying to pull kids away from it. And because I was doing that, the old associates I'd left behind were sort of turning on me. Because I'm saying, fuck the drug dealing, fuck the rats that deal drugs, they're all fucking shit house rats, blah, 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 I'm come away from them. Mm. Because I'd done that, they started, and the, what, the minute they realised I'd left the game behind and I wouldn't retaliate and uh, I wouldn't seek revenge for whatever they'd done and I wouldn't jeopardise my freedom, which is priceless. It's, priceless. It's, worth, it's worth more than fucking anything else. 100%. The minute they realised I weren't into that mindset anymore they took it as a weakness mm. and just started fucking coming at me trying so i get out of prison go to prison in 2004 get out of prison in 2016 
because I was under the old law, I only had 18 months license, which was what the old law was like. If you got a year, you'd have a month's license. Okay. So I finished me, I finished my license conditions. As soon mm. as my license conditions were up, because it was on map of three tier four, which is the biggest risk in the community. It's only two percent of ex prisoners on that map that. three. Mm. So as soon as that was up, I just went back to my Mars house to back into Liverpool. I hadn't been allowed in Liverpool for the full 18 months. I had 50 people on my no contact list. I couldn't go anywhere. I was restricted. As soon as my licence was up, I just bombed the state back to Liverpool. I'm in there. I start doing this with the message. Mm. Three months after me being back in Liverpool, someone's tried to shoot me dead again on my Mars step and got the kid next to me and put him in hospital in a bad way. No way. So it was just crazy. From then on, mates, I barriered down in my apartment. Never left, but it was just getting to mm. to conserve my mental fucking strength and my me mental capacity. I just had to leave yeah. Anfield area, which was L5, and moved just outside of L5 to like L13. Right. But then it was made almost. But I've just had pure problems with all the organised crime groups, you know, like the Kennington cartel and that. So it is what it is, but you know what? During the whole process... I've dragged youthful minds away from that fucking life. Exactly, yeah. And stopped them going through. It's just a traumatic experience for anyone. And if you don't get on it, mm. you get life off. So, I mean, let's talk about it. A lot of people, some people watching will relate and some won't. So in your situation, it happens a lot where someone's friend or their brother is being shot and killed or stabbed or whatever. And they're out there seeking revenge, especially as men. We're very prideful. You feel disrespected. You feel like, nah, there's just... I know, because we're protective of our people, so naturally you just feel like it's only right. Well, some of you maybe don't, but I know, yeah, you know, you know. What what does someone do in that situation then? Because we're telling them to leave the knives alone, leave the guns alone, leave crime alone. How does someone drop their pride? It's easier said than done to just, you know what, this has happened, let me just be the bigger person and just move. How how do you do it? Cause I'm still trying to learn the art of it, bro. Well, it, it, comes, it comes by a few, there's a few things that impede your decisions in life, especially when you're in that game. Mm. And that's peer pressure and loyalty. Mm. Now you could you can be loyal to a group of people Tracks. on the back of one kid that you know. Mm -hmm. If you've been with this one kid for ages, all of a sudden you're a part of this group. You're loyal to him, you're loyal to everyone in the group. Mm -hmm. If one of them kids gets gets done by someone, because you've got that loyal bond with the group, and then the group is the peer pressure. You're sort of driven into a way of reaction the wrong way, not realising the consequences. Mm. And that's why they brought that joint enterprise in. Exactly, yeah. Just to combat that sort of mindset. Mm -hmm. You just need to understand that it's a strength. It is. You, it, it's a powerful strength to not retaliate in that way. You might have the capacity... You might be a dangerous motherfucker, mm. but if you're not in control of your emotions, you fuck all at the end yeah, of the right. day. Right. Doesn't matter how much money you've got, right. how many people you've got around you. If you're not in control of your emotions, you're, of you're a bell end. Yeah. And, so and that's one thing. I, no, you're right. And that's one thing I'm trying to learn because I'm still at that point in my life where there's certain things I struggle to like let it go. Once it's dealt with in whatever way it's dealt with, but like even then, I should be able to. I'm getting better with it, with controlling my emotions, but that's just me being honest. Like, someone might say something crazy, and I'm like, I have to address it, but I'm learning now to not address it because it might go from this to that. It's not that you're not addressing it, it's that you're addressing it differently. Yeah. So you're still addressing it, but you're addressing it intelligently. You're not, you're not just a loose yeah. cannon. Yeah. You're not jeopardising your freedom on the back of, you know. Yeah. And what what we done is we've been attacked and straight away, bam. Yeah. Let's attack back. Without sitting back, contemplating, thinking, yeah. you know, really assessing the risks of mm -hmm. what you're about to do. Yeah, your boy's been done. But what point, what what use are you if you run out and get yourself lifed off? It's true. And but he's going to sit yeah. on a wing with all these fellas and you don't go nowhere. Mm. You don't see no fresh faces unless they're doing 30 wrecks. And if you don't do your jail fucking right, and it's very difficult to do once you're in that life, you're not even getting out of the side without pissing your fucking bed. Do you understand? Mm. The stress of the life, the diet in there, the way you're living in there, 
you're pissing the bed over 50, at the age of 50, you're dribbling, you know, you can't, some of them can't even hold their own shit in. <laughs> Honestly, right? laugh, bro. It's Honestly, mad. like that's where it is. <laughs> it's mad, they Steve. don't realise that. They think they're yeah. going to stay young all the time no, until no. until the teeth are falling out of there. Because you can't no. go in jail and go, yeah, I don't want to set a turkey teeth, mate. Yeah. Do you understand? So by the time these kids are reaching 40, they've done nothing but play on a computer in prison mm. and eating boiled sweets. It's crazy, bro. Looking rough as fuck. Mm. So for yourself, um, they say that in jail, obviously, there's a lot of... So yeah, you've got the people that obviously read books got people that would be pushing weights, you've got people that are trying to learn new stuff and they're just feeling young. They're like 60 and they're like, I've only got another 30 years and they're still stuck at that mindset forever. And then you've even got people that learn religion and stuff. Did, did religion ever come to you in jail at all? Are you a religious person? Well, I was born Christian, mate, but didn't practice it. Mm. And it was like the only thing that guided me through my prison was Jesus Christ. Okay. Yes, you see it all over me. Love prison it. tats all over me. Mm. It was not to discriminate against other religion. It was just something for me to focus on in these hard times that I found myself in. You know, even when you go to prison, you've still got a lot of mad shit going on. Your birds fucked you off. Your ma's getting ill. Mm. Your dad's just died. Your brother's landed in another jail down here. He's getting so. There's loads of fucking mad shit that you've got to deal with. And to keep yourself focused, you need a purpose. Definitely. And religion is that purpose. And when I started doing my prison, it was the spirit of Christ that gave me that purpose. These days, now, in the prison system, it's the religion of Islam mm. that's given thousands of people that purpose. And what you've got is individuals that would lose their emotions on the land and react, behave in a certain pattern, do all mad shit. The minute they find focus, and fo that focus being like religion, Islam... The character changes, mm. you know, they're representing something now. And it, what they're representing should not be pissed on or took the piss out of. So you just get, you can get a very violent individual who's not in control of his emotions, just acting destructive, find religion, and then all of a sudden he's in control of his emotions He's conducting himself in a completely different manner. Mm -hmm. But that's religion for me was everything in prison. Yeah. And then when I've got out and I've seen the way the church is behaving and the, the shit that they're letting happen, and like yeah, how do you man feel about sleep that? with man and all this, it, it, it's took me away from the church. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm convinced the church is more demonic than anything fucking else. But it hasn't took me away from the spirit of Christ. Yeah, that's the main thing. Because, I mean, even me, I went to a Catholic school. Yeah. Um, I don't know why. It's still terrible, bro. Mm. It's a terrible school, but it was Catholic. So, like, we would, yeah, pray um, at the end of the day. I think we'd pray in the morning as well. We'd have mass and everything. But I wasn't really a religious person. I just went there because my mum just put me in yeah, there. Do you know what I mean? But, but when I look now, as you said, um, this, like, Islam's growing massively. Um, and they stand for something, which I think is the problem right now. In the West, no one stands for anything. Well, all you all you got to do to understand what um, Islam stands for, and everyone you used to get these, you get used to get these individuals screaming, "Oh, the the Muslims are groomers and they target children and da 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 da," and the Christians don't. But what you see now is, you see these rallies where you've got people with rainbow flags and you've got men. Hairy ass men dressed as women running around in bondage and shit like this. And you've got loads of parents bringing the kids to watch this shit. And, and yeah, but you will never see a Muslim woman or a Muslim man at one of them places. Yeah, you and you will never see a child of a religious man of Islam or a woman of Islam at one of them places. And that's where you can see if it, it's all about, to me, protecting the children. Because if you don't protect the children, We've got no future. Mm. And what you're seeing now with these pride events and all these sick individuals, so that's what they are. Let's have it right. Without me, I've, I've been getting slaughtered for fucking years for this point of view. But the bottom line is, years ago, you used to have overweight, greasy, perverted old men that would not come out the fucking house. Mm. They used to twitch at the curtains. And we used to get told a message in, don't speak to the strangers. You know, it was that it was that yes, bad. You, you could all them men, them twisted, weird, perverted, you know, 
whatever you want to call them, they're now out of the rooms, in society, dancing around like the fucking devil. They're dressed as women. They're acting like women. Do you know, it's like the devil is... In fr- devil's in disguise. The world's gone mad, bro. My thing is, is where does this come from? <laughs> where, where does... Like, do you know how crazy that is? When you look at how, like, powerful England was and how powerful men were and this whole side of the world... Um, yeah, but now it just seems that like everyone's crazy, bro. Where, where does that come from? Who's infiltrated us? We haven't been infiltrated, mate. No. We've been led. And we've been led from the get-go. It's only the last, what, five years that people are starting to question the leaders properly. Mm, it's true. Especially in the Western world. It's mad. What, we, we've been spun a narrative for decades now that like places like Saudi Arabia... Fucking the East is bad. It's full of these and it's full of them and it's Literally. full of this and the life's bad there and the lifestyle's bad there. When in reality, in Saudi Arabia, you could leave your whole house open with millions of pounds no worth of valuables there and no one will touch you for six months, mm-hmm. ever. Mm-hmm. Whereas here, you leave your door open for five minutes, bang. Bro, the door don't even have to be open, they're you, kicking it down, That's bro. what I mean. Your woman, <laughs> your woman can walk out of um, a social event in that in that country, get home nice and safe without any any threat at all to her. Facts. Here, she's getting attacked. Yeah. So it's the West that's completely fucked, and it's the leaders in the West that are fucked in. Mm. And the leaders in the West try to make the East to follow the same pattern of events as the West, and the East don't have it. Mm. And so when you're seeing Iraq, um, Syria. Egypt, Gaddafi, all these individuals being targeted by the dominant West countries like America and Britain. The real reason is, is because they are not conforming exactly, to yeah. the West's ways and the West's, let's call it, human rights agenda. Ideologies, yeah. Yeah, so ideology, yeah. That's what they say. We want human rights right around the world and you need to adhere with them, but ignore our human rights that we've been breaching rights across the fucking board. Well, that's the thing. Um, and I've had this conversation with a few people because I've done so many podcasts this week and we've got an idea that our way is the right way. Always. Like, everyone else, whether it be in, as you said, the Middle East or Africa or whatever, they, they're not right, we're right. And when you look at a lot of the stuff, it's, it's just wrong, bro. It's all wrong, do you know it's what I mean? Wrong, and man. as you said, like, I mean, you look at somewhere like Saudi or Dubai or wherever, or the United Emirates, they don't have the same issues we have. They don't have Not knife even. crime. They don't have gun crime. They don't have drug issues. They don't have a bunch of mental health issues. They're pretty straight. I mean, have you ever thought about like maybe moving over there? Loads of people are migrating. It's them people that need to remain. Mm. Because if you don't, the kids are fucked here. Yeah. Are they savable though? Yeah, every kid's innocent mate until they get caught. True. Caught up in it. We're True. all born innocent. We're all born called God's children. Mm. We're full of energy. There's no bias in us. There's no hatred towards any different groups or skin colour or Facts. religion. It's We're all born innocent. It's only when the school system or the environment gets into the brain, they start developing bias and hatred and group mentality. So it's, it's, the, it's the system that's ruining the children. And now with these flag swingers all over the fucking gaff and the targeting children, it's the school curriculum again where they're destroying the like man and woman mindsets. Mm. We've grew up mum and dad. Do you no, understand what no, I'm it's saying? anything, bro. No, it's anything. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Over anything, that's the most important thing that we can reproduce God's children. Yeah. And what's happening these days is it's being quietly sacrificed so it's like a, it's like a, a it's like a mild form of depopulation isn't it you yeah I mean? if literally. you want to if you want to go to the extreme if we continue down this path you won't have a get you won't have a girl and a man ever getting together it'll be girl girl man man no kids every yeah, kid that's that coming coming from a test tube yeah because if you think about it the next generation of kids from the things that they're teaching in school and stuff that's not even normal actually my uh, Mrs. sent me something earlier. Let me just find it again. The the, the kids, the, what what the kids are getting taught with behind the t- behind the parents. But this is what I'm saying. You see what that is? So that's a um, so that's that yeah, that's, that's, that's a that's a, that's a, that's a that's, yeah that's a Costa. Um, I've seen that the other yeah, day actually. Yeah, yeah. That's Costa 
And what they've done there is shaved the breast off a woman and left the scarred as if she's a man yeah. drinking coffee. That's how fucked it is. And it's in the pride, pride colours of fucking... Crazy agenda. There, it's just the devil. The, 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 Satan is everywhere. If you believe in good and bad, if you believe in the devil and God and all, you know, the fallen angel and all this, if you've mm. got any sort of belief in that, you'll be looking at today's society, especially in the West, and going, shit. Yeah, it's crazy. I saw yeah. there was a video, because even on that topic, I don't know, have you got a YouTube channel? Is it Scoused Off? Is that yours? No. So people, that's what, people, have you seen it, though? There's loads of it out there, but I don't, it's okay. not me. It's my content yeah, from yeah. over the years, but yeah. I'm not on YouTube. Okay, because there's a channel called Scoused Stuff. And Scouse it, shows, it Off. Or Scouse It Off, yeah, I didn't even see it, sorry. But, um... It was like you and Weatherspins and they were telling you not to record because you're basically like talking about what you're talking about now. Yeah, anything that goes against the political agenda, you get cancelled. Mm. What even happened with that? So what, you just told you to stop recording and that was it? But you've got to. Mm. You know, you got to because otherwise you just you just ring the police on you and then all of a sudden they they bring... During, during, the, pan, during the pandemic, while everyone's focused on that bullshit, they're bringing laws under the door. Laws that are in place now that wasn't there two years ago. And if you start, if you say anything derogative towards someone that... So, for example, if you're sat there as a, as a red-blooded male and you want me to start calling you a she or a her, and I don't, I can be arrested for it. What's that? What, what, what Transphobia. Mean? Okay. That's an offence now. So if you're walking down your street... So I was in Birmingham the other day and they've got this 10-day festival... And I'm sat there watching this little like mini concert, and you've got a man with a beard walking past me with a dress on, fake breasts hanging out, sitting there and acting like a woman. Now, if I was to voice my opinion about him and go, you fucking twisted, I'd be arrested and imprisoned. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And what you're seeing is if you're offending them, but they're offending any religion, nothing happens to them. Yeah, it's a crazy world that we're living in it's right a, now. It, yeah, it's just, it's just protect the children. That's the bottom line. We're too far gone. We've been in this fucking mindset. What, what's been... It's, it's basically like a, 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 an indoctorate. We've been indoctorated into this fucking mad mm -hmm. mindset. And we've just, as adults, we've let it go. We've let this start 10 years ago to get where it is right now. Yeah. What we can't continue to do is let them impact on the innocence of God's children, which is all our children. That's the main thing, yeah. Yeah. One thing that I've realised with... I mean, it happens everywhere. It's actually happened down here not too long ago, a couple, like, two years ago. But there's big cases out up north. Is Everton near you? Yeah. It's near you, right? Is that, like, neighbouring? Yeah, it's neighboring. the same place. So, L5 is Kirkday, 11 and Anfield. Okay, cool, yeah. Because I was going to say, I remember when I was younger, maybe, like, five, six. And I think I was... Uh, he, he was an Everton fan. I think he was playing football in like a cage and then he got shot to death. Do you know what I'm on about? The big case, massive, like probably like 20 years ago. I can there's find lots. the name. Oh, so it happens quite generally quite yeah, a lot. Yeah, there. that's what I'm saying. There's I'm body counts, the there's body counts. The only one I think you're thinking about is... Um, and it yeah. took them years to find the killer, but I remember when it... Right, Reese Jones? Well, that's what, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that, that was that's, the one. You know, I think that's the one, yeah. But when you start talking about Reese Jones, mm -hmm. who was just a young boy who got caught in a drug dealer's conflict, then you've got to start thinking about Olivia Corbell. Yeah, that's more current again, recent. a few months ago, who was caught up in a drug dealer's conflict. And that's the shit I've been screaming about since I've been released from custody. The line's being crossed now. When we were doing it, you didn't go to a door where there was kids. You didn't attack people's mums. You, you know, there was sort of, there was like a moral capacity on what you should do and what you shouldn't do. And if you, if you cross that line, the old school would let you know you've crossed the fucking line. Mm. You no, know, so it wouldn't carry on. But these days, it's just completely crossed to the point where you, when drug dealers fall out and the majority of the time they've been mates all their lives. So you'll have a group on one estate, they're all mates, they're playing footy, all of a sudden they get involved in drugs, all of a sudden the drugs and the money has brought this fracture through that group, they split off, a year down the line, they're fighting with each other over drugs, da -da -da. and then them drug wars now 
are going into the general population's homes. Yeah, for real. It's, it's fucking businesses up. It's wrecking communities. So yeah. you'll have a community in Liverpool where you've probably got two bad families on that estate. Mm. But then two bad families are destroying the whole estate for the other 80 families. Yeah. They won't come out the door at 8 o'clock at night. So, so it's drug dealing, drug dealers, the people that peddle it, the people that have been in the game for years and know exactly what they're doing when they're giving the kids the firearms and the drugs to do the shit. Mm. They're all dirty, dying fucking scumbags. And when it comes to the day of judgment, they're going to feel the fucking wrath. That's it. Mm. Whilst I'm here, particular the city of Liverpool, yeah. I am going to scream at the top of my lungs about the damage that the organised crime groups have done, continue to do, and will continue to go on and do if pe more people like me don't get up and start screaming at the kids. Yeah. They're all manipulating yous and fucking rats. The minute you go to jail, they'll bang your bed. When you go to Listen. jail, they'll, they'll, they'll look after your mum for six to eight weeks. Once you've got your L plates, whilst you're on remand, they'll look after you because there's a possibility you can get back out and That's do the it. shit. But once yeah. you've got your sentence, a couple your of own. months later, you're on your own. And if you've got a 30 wreck, in Jordan, you can go in when you're 21. Yeah. You can go in when you're 24. Jordan, I stretch of 30. You'll have, you still have that little reputation, but outside you're nothing. No, you give a fuck, yeah. People forget. People are forgetting about you every single fucking Sad day. Story. And eventually you'll have no one Sad. but your mum yeah, yeah, yeah. or your dad or yeah. your sister. But because you've got that long to do, a few years down the line, your mum's passed away. A few more years down the line, he's passed away. Mm. To the point where in your last five years or something, you are alone, isolated. You're going to get out of fucking nothing. Yep. The area that you left has been regenerated. Totally the people that was in that area have left, gone. Mm. So you're just getting out to... People have got families. You're kids, getting out to... Yeah. yeah, you're going to miss the opportunity of creating your own fucking family tree. And that's one of the biggest things you mm. think about. Yeah, reproduction. That's so crazy. It's mad. And, and yeah, with that even being said, I mean, it's hard. 30 years is a long time. As I said, I know some people that are doing... I've got a few people that I know doing 30 years. I went to school with, grew up with and stuff. And as you said, when it's Ramadan time, everyone's there. And I saw I was at the trials. I was going to the Old Bailey all the time. About three years in a row, I went to the Old Bailey for all different cases. And you, you see people get 30 years, 35. Bro, I'm not even... I'm 25. So even me, I'm sitting there thinking, you know, I've got the studio, I've got the podcast, I've got multiple other things, and I'm growing. I can't look at... That's not... I, it's not even possible. No. It's not it, possible. It's not possible. There's only so it's much one can do. But look at you, lad, 25. Yeah. So you're, a, you're an example. I, I don't know nothing about your background. Oh, yeah, but what, what I'm hearing from you, it's yeah. that you've been absorbed in that sort of lifestyle, whether that's where you come from or what. Yeah. But look where you're at at 25. Yeah. Or look where other kids are at at 25 who are successful, who have got businesses on the go, who have become music Definitely. artists. You know, there's a lot of shit around drill music right now. And yeah. there's, there's, there's a lot of negativity around it. And out of 100 drill artists from the streets, you might get three or four Actually. that'll be poached out of there and mm. make it. Mm. The rest don't. And they're just wasting the fucking lives, it's you true. know. Drive your energy into something where you know Definitely. if I do A, B, and C, I'll be able to get the rest of it and yeah. stay away from prison, stay away from the gang culture on your streets. You'll see the sensible ones. Son. Yeah. How can I say, years ago, you used to have us on the corner and we'd be selling the weed and we'd be doing this, we'd be doing the madness, but you're on the same estate, you'd have the kids going to work, mm. whether it was a fucking Tesco's or a McDonald's or... What any any sort of employment they were doing, and we would be taking the piss out of them mm. because they were going to work. Get on you, you're not know, better going to work. <laughs> yeah. They're not dressed as well as us because we're making money that you just don't normally get in that sort of. But years and years down the line, when we're doing that revolving door in and out of prison, in and out of prison, not really having any secure money in the bank, not really being able to get a mortgage because of all the mad shit, you're looking at them. He's never done a day in jail. He's been with that girlfriend for the last 15 years. They've had three kids. He's paid the mortgage off his house. He's got a steady income. He's enjoying yeah. holidays. Although to criminals, that shit to me. Mm -hmm. That's the life you want to be leading towards. And if Definitely. you can do that like you, 
Mm-hmm. So that that must be that must be one of one of your goals in the future. Family, yeah, family, of course, home. course, course. It's that standard procedure. And to be honest, I've never really spoke about it because for me, this is a podcast, so I'm. It's more about you than me. But just because people get a bit confused because they're on the internet, they might see something and think. I'm not going to get into full details, but for me, I didn't grow up necessarily poor. Like, my mum always worked. Yeah, I know my dad, but my mum worked. My mum really raised me and looked after me. But I went to... I, I lived in a bad area. I went to school with a lot of bad people where a lot of people's brothers were killers, their cousins this, their uncles that, and then that's the next generation of that. So their siblings ended up even being worse yeah. than the ones that we're even talking about. Do you get what I'm saying? And then even being from Northwest <clears> London, <throat> you'll probably know me anyway if you're around my generation. Like every area went to my school, bro. So as you said, we all knew each other. We all grew up with each other. For me, it wasn't really like a case of gang banging. I did things to make money because um, obviously you're just young and everyone wants to make money and there's only so much money your mom's going to give you for pocket money or whatever. But it was more survival, I would say, because even, as I said, I, I think it's something I'll do at like 100K where I actually let you lot know really what life is. But like, I remember my mum was talking about it the other day. I was like 11. And I got held up at knife point on the stairs, like fat kitchen knife, bro, on the other side of London. Like I never got robbed because... I've always kind of, I, even still now, my pride's very high. So even at 11, my pride was mad high, like I weren't going and I was smart. So I managed to kind of basically give my stuff to someone else before cause I could sense that yeah. someone was mm-hmm. coming. But that's from like 11. Before that, even in the area, I used to always get the people from the other side, 10, the primary school, bro, trying to rob you. So that builds a certain character. It's like you're either going to be a victim or you're going to make sure you're good. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. But now obviously I'm older. I don't have those issues. And I just stay away from everything and just stay on a straight and narrow, you know? It, but you're you're one of the ones that's got it through. You can yeah. either have 10 years of A-grades or 10 years of knife blades. It's entirely <laughs> up to you, isn't it, mate? Yeah, so yeah, you, yeah. You, you can avoid that shit yeah. or you can participate yeah. in that shit. Definitely. You can have the best mum in the world. Yeah. Raises you with the, the best moral capacity or compass you can have in the world. Yeah. But the minute you go out your door on one of our estates... Your identity is being stolen. Of course. And if you don't keep hold of your identity, yeah. truly, who you are, you start yeah. falling into the identity of the group you're mixing with. Fact. You start acting differently, dressing differently, fucking your personality switches against you. The parents mm. that's raised you and give you a proper identity. Mm. And once you lose your identity to a group or a gang or another individual, you're basically going down a path of destruction. Of course. So the, the one of the main things I scream at the youth is always remember who you are Facts. and don't lose your identity to no one. Definitely. No one. Stay in touch with who you really are. 100%. That kid, pleasant kid, respectful kid, yeah. Ba, 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 bam. All of a sudden, you're mixing with this group. Mm. You're nasty. You're consuming drugs. You're, yeah. you're letting shots off through your fingers. You know, mm. you know. It's just even really stuff like that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And I think sometimes, as you said, you can be raised away at home, but once you leave that door, what's on your like in your estate or in your area, even school, as I said, what's going on there? What's going on around you? Do you know that's what I mean? Is, but it, it affects the whole community, as exactly. you said. It's a community Badly. thing. It's a ripple effect, mate. It's a, it's a massive ripple effect. You can have, as I said before, you can have 80 families on this estate. All decent people, leave your door yeah. open, neighbours, come in any time you want, and then yeah. you'll have two families on the estate, and the, the shit they're peddling, the violence they're participating in, the ripple effect that has in that one community. So yeah. when someone, when you get a young man shot dead on an estate, and you have all been on the estate all your lives, yeah. it's not just that gang that's feeling it, it's the parents of the kids who live on the estate. Mm-hmm. Everyone's, oh, everyone's, but if it keeps on happening, yeah. The first time everyone goes, oh shit. The second time, oh, third time, oh, it 10 years down it. the line, 20 years down the line when it's being happening year in, year fucking out, mm. no one gives a fuck. It's just protect your own, close your door, say nothing. That's pretty much And that's the wrong means. attitude. Mm. And for the youth out there that feel um, like, you know, they have to carry enough, they just feel like whatever's going on around them, what, what would you say to those youth? There's loads of reasons why they're carrying knives, though, mate. Mm. It's the environment. It's when we were getting raised, if we don't fucking sit wrong, we'd get a nice body shot or a dead leg or a slap. You know, you'd be taught a fucking lesson off your dad. These days, dads aren't teaching their kids lessons in that way. So we naturally, growing up, 
in that era, mm. you could fight naturally because you, you're getting slapped about by your dad. It's giving you then defence tactics. You can throw a punch. You can defend yourself. The majority of these kids now, they get can't shouted fight. at a day and they can't fight. So when they're, when they're going out yeah. of their household and they're going onto that estate and they're on the fringe of this, this gang culture, it's instantly Weapon. intimidating lifestyle. You've got an intimidating lifestyle. Mm. And you'll have kids that will never want to use the knife ever. Most they, of them. Or most of them yeah. will never want to use the knife. They just want it there as a scare tactic. Mm. But if you've got a knife on you as a scare tactic and you get really scared, you're going to pull it out. And, and once you've pulled it out, you can't predict the consequences of what's coming next. Mm. And the majority of the time is... You're either getting a puncture wound or you're giving someone a puncture wound and it's just finishing you. Mm. Whether it's death or life off. And you might, it's like, if I'm with you and a group of others and I know you've got a blade on me and I know you're a bit sick with your blade and we're going down there, you get into a disturbance and you fucking do someone with your blade. Yeah. I'm going to the same place you're going yeah. with this, this joint enterprise. 100%. If if you've if you've got a good mate and you know he's floating around with this blade on and it could go and you're not telling your good mate, listen, stop carrying that fucking knife. Mm. You basically deserve to go with him. Do you understand what I mean? Definitely. And I think um there was like a point of time where not me personally, but like people would say, Okay, that person is active and they'll do something. So they're going with you, but you don't even realise when you're younger that they're actually setting you up. They're adding more fuel to it. So they're just really as bad as you, as you said. Rather than saying, don't bring it. Yeah, they're like, oh, we're good. He's instead got Instead of looking out for your boy's interest, but you, you, uh, you, you know, yeah. you're looking out for the bad interests. Exactly. And that's why me, I don't even, yeah, I don't chill with anyone no more, bro. I just work, stay focused it's, it's, with the missus. You've probably, you've got your family. identity, basically. Yeah, you probably, yeah, yeah. probably, I don't know where, I don't know if you felt it, but if you're raised and you're coming out of your mum's house and you're mixing with, You've probably lost your identity a little bit and now you're tapping back into it. No, it is. I, I wouldn't say I lost my identity. I would just say that I was in an environment that I am not someone, I've never been a victim. Like, it's not like a flex, I'm just being honest. I've been in a lot of like situations and me, my pride was very high that I'm willing to go wherever it goes to. So I had to be willing to be a certain way, whereas now I'm not in that environment. Like I moved out like 2018, 2019. So I haven't had to even be like that. I live in a much better place now. Yeah, where I don't have to worry. Like, truth be told, and you don't probably know, the area that I was in where my mum said, all right, cool, let's just go. On one weekend, bro, within, from here to there, there was two shootings back to back, like, dead, like, headshots, both headshots. Like, someone got shot in the head on a Friday, I'm getting a call. So-so was being shot. I was, even saw that person a few days before, mad. Tapes up for 24 hours. The second the tape's down, I get another call. Someone else just being shot in the head. I'm like, bro, this, it didn't even feel real. And that's when even my mum had to say, yeah, we need to go because it's just mad. And then it's like, the people that are, have done it, I went to school with them. I've grown up with them. The guy's been shot, I know him. So it, it, it was all mad, but you, as you, I'm you, not in that no more. You were so. lucky, mate. Yeah, yeah, You no, were definitely. lucky you had a mum that was guiding you, right? Yeah. A lot, a, lot of, a lot of people, a lot of parents would love to be able to go, right? <laughs> We're gone out this area, but yeah. they can't. It was and they've just got to live with it. Yeah, no, nice. literally. So then, and even with that, as you said, um, civilians end up getting caught up in this stuff as well. So people that ain't even involved end up getting hit That's in it, the yeah. process exactly. of it. You know, it's madness. Exactly, it's, it's, it's gone beyond the point. And the only way you're going to... Uh, I'm a firm believer in, and I've shouted it for years, is prevention is better than better cure. cure. It, it always 100%. has been, mate. And if you don't start preventing what the fuck's coming... I keep on screaming it, and I don't, I don't scream it in other cities because it's not really my place to be screaming about it. But within the city of Liverpool, the city that I love mm. and care about more than anything, I'm a proper thoroughbred Liverpoolian, mate. Mm. It's all about when I'm seeing our city being drove into the fucking floor, I'm talking every aspect mm. of life within our communities. Dad's jailed, mums with addictions, kids getting dragged into care. Kids being shot dead, young girls being raped, being drugged, all this horrible man. Getting happening to our own people. Mm. And the point I'm making is it's not people from up there with them big high ranking families that and affects, no. that's coming in and doing this damage to us. It's our neighbours. It's the kids we've known round the corner for the last twenty years, went to school with them. We're mm. killing each other. 
over drugs and the poison it spreads, mate. You see the uh, the last one, the Olivia one that was in Liverpool. I don't know what that was to do. Was was that like a drug feud? That's the same thing. You, okay. you, you've had you've had a lad that kicks doors and for grows. Right. You've had a lad that grows the grows. This lad's attempted this, and this thought this 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 lad went fuck that. Fuck that. You're not doing that. Retaliated, but he's got a bit of a body count, so he's got a reputation anyway, and he's fucked it up. Mm. But there's a line that shouldn't be crossed. And the minute he lost sight of that kid and he could hear a kid screaming, you back off mm. and you don't fucking do it. You know what I mean? But yeah. he's gone out and ended up killing this young girl. Because I swear the family wasn't even related to the guy, right? Did they even know the person that he wanted, I swear? He, he was not related, but you know. Oh, okay. Because it's a community in Liverpool mm. and everyone knows everyone. Right. It doesn't matter what you're doing. You could be legit if you're living on the same street as us. We know you. Mm. Even if they don't like you, they're scared enough to let on to you. Right. Do you understand what I'm saying? So Okay, fair enough. With yourself, didn't you have a podcast at one point? Was it, I've had was six. It, had six? <laughs> Fucking hell. Can yes. I see, uh, you got, is it real life? I, I, yeah, well, that's life? gone. That's gone? Yeah, that, that's been gone for over a year. How come? Because I just get cancelled out. Oh, really? So oh. I can go on YouTube and within, within like three months, I've got 20... 30,000 subscribers. Mm. Me hours watched mm. through the roof. And it sort of kills other low-level podcasters off in the city of Liverpool. Okay. So the audiences that they have got, mm. when I pop out there, their audience and watch numbers just go, because they're all focused on what I'm doing. Right. And they, the old, what you, what, up north, I don't know what it's like down south, but up north, the podcasters who think they dominate proceedings, it's like a network and you'll have him getting interviewed off him. A week later, you'll be with the mate. A week later, you'll be with the mate. Yeah, yeah, with I'm the with, you, I'm with the mate. You. So that's the way they work. And if you don't participate with that network and their way of thinking, mm -hmm. you cancel those. Yeah, because... I'm, very, I, I'm uh, very controversial as well. You know, with the stuff with that. that comes out of my mouth. You're speaking your mind, bro. I don't think there should be freedom of speech, you know? Nothing right, but I that. get shut down for it. Mm. So you, you probably won't. But because mm. I'm in Liverpool screaming about certain individuals and certain topics, I just get shut down. So mm. I've been off I've been off YouTube for a year. But even then, I'd start my channel up. Mm. You'd have someone out there downloading every bit of content I do, get me shut down, and then, run then it open theirs as if it's me. I want to see you do more YouTube, bro. Cause I feel like you're a good speaker. You've got a lot to say. I'm on loads of platforms, good, mate. And, you know, I'm looking... What I will say to anyone that's thinking about going on to any sort of social media platform, yeah, mm. YouTube's fantastic, but it's not really... You're not really tapping into a global market. Right. You know, you start off in your area, and if, if you, you're interesting, you might start getting pushed out. If you've got other people willing to push you out, then mm -hmm. you'll flow. But if you go on TikTok and you've got something about you, TikTok is probably the best social media platform for you to make an impact globally as well as locally. So I'm on TikTok the majority of the time. I get closed down on there. Yeah. But I just set up again. You're on it. And you're tapping into the whole fucking world. And it doesn't matter what area of concern you're in, whether you just want, if you're promoting a message like me, if you want to earn a, um, you know, another revenue of stream of revenue consistent, if you if you want to start a business up, podcasting, clothing, car rental, anything, mm. TikTok's the place to do it. So what's, because um, I know back in the day, as I said, I started the podcast in 2020 and that was originally when I wanted to get you on. And at the time, I remember you was on like loads of podcasts back in that time. Like, that's fair to say, right? You was on like every platform yeah. pretty much. What's your relationships like with everybody now? Cause I don't know. I, I don't see everything, but I see in odd the, little in, clips here. In the there. early days, yeah. I'm fresh out of jail, mm. naive to this game. And I just had the energy sucked out of me. Yeah. You know what I mean? So... You see me on that popular podcast. You see me on that popular podcast. And I'm just getting going round. My whole intention of doing these podcasts is choose mm -hmm. a life, not a knife, United Kingdom. I don't get paid for them. Mm. I'm not I'm not on the path of trying to be famous or fill an ego. I'm simply trying to educate the youth to stay away from that poisonous life and the people that are in it. Mm. And anyone who's got morals still intact and have been through the prison system, 
will understand where I'm coming from. Do you understand? It's nasty when you've got people that's been in that life, been through the prison system, seen the mate shot dead, had the Mars doors kicked in, continuing the game, come out the game with the money, but participate for the money and have the kids doing the dirty work for them, knowing quite well that 16-year-old kid who's never been to prison is now going to end up in prison within a few years and he knows it. He's willing to sacrifice this kid's freedom. The kid might be shot dead. His family will be... Dist- so when you've got individuals that are willing after experiencing what the life does to them and they're still willing to get an innocent youth off the streets and lead them down that same path, even though he knows the pain, the fucking loss, the trauma, they're just dirty fucking scumbags, mate. Mm. Did you ever see... Uh, there's a, He's probably one of the biggest platforms. He's not in England. It's called uh, Vlad TV. Have you seen him before? I've seen Vlad TV. They contacted me a few years ago, but oh, really? because... Because I was fucking... Licence, was it? I'm going a bit loose. Okay. You know, not acting fucking the way I should be conducting myself. Mm. It sort of died off the interest from them. Right. But it's just like all these platforms, you know, these true crime platforms. Mm. You've got real individuals, but then you've got half real. People. So what you're hearing out of my mouth can be accounted for. I'm not I'm not throwing icing on it. Mm. I'm not trying to be shutting and fucking not. Yeah. But what you'll get a lot of is you'll get individuals on these platforms and instead of just being open and honest about what they was in the game, mm. they make out that they were Maybe only they like was. more powerful, in control, when in reality, you're not. Mm. And what all you're doing is glorifying a lifestyle that is fucking shit. No, you're right. And the more kids that watch you glorify and that shit, mm. so they call themselves reformed characters and there's not that many real reformed characters on these platforms. They're just filling egos and want to write a book and, you know, all this crazy fucked up shit. No, you're, you're definitely right. And the easiest way to find out is when you watch three podcasts and they've said three different things. That's it, yeah. That's the easiest way to find we, out when someone's But not, not even that. You know, you just know. Yeah, of course. If you've well. been if you've been like a certified member, you know when someone's chatting shit. If you've done enough jail, straight headed, mm. and you've been around, you know, in prison, mate, everyone's a fucking barrister. Everyone knows the law like the back of their hands, but they're all fucked up in jail. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So you can recognise them. You know when someone's bullshitting, yeah. basically. There was a case with uh, Vlad TV. There was this guy and he, his name was called, I think, BTB Savage. And young black guy, probably around my age. And he done a story on him killing a home invader, right? So he's gone on Vlad TV and he said, yeah, this person came to do a music feature. He's gone in, he's coming to the house. He's brought his cousins, etc. cetera. Um, and long story short, the guy tries to rob him. He's with his missus. His missus, I think there was like a tussle Long story short, the person gets killed, right? But this guy's gone on to Vlad TV and he's made a whole interview about it. Bro, about two to three days after it drops, the guy gets killed. Hunted him down and sprayed the fuck out of his car. And that is, once again, a case, as you said, of adding the fuel to the fire. And now you've got... And the guy wasn't really like that. It was actually his girlfriend that killed the person. His girlfriend actually used the gun and killed him. But he told the story and didn't really have any remorse about it. And obviously it's kind of... They didn't look at him bragging, you know? Well, that's, that's, that's the risk I take. Mm. You know, when I when I've when I've screamed this or screamed that about that group or that firm or him or this, that's the risk you're taking. Mm. But if you're on a righteous path, I know I keep on coming back to like the spirit of Christ, but if you're on a righteous path and you believe, you will be guided and any danger that comes your way, you'll be guided out of it. The amount of the attempts of towards my life mm. I've been up I've got got my first Osmond morning when I was nineteen years of age, you know what I mean? So or like 20, so it's it's just part of what we do. It'll never leave me alone. Yeah, I've left the past behind, but the people from the past won't leave me behind. Yeah. So it's with you, right through. In every, if you're suspected of having a body count, you're never getting left alone. Mm. You understand what I mean? Yeah. Doesn't matter what you do in society, doesn't matter how much you put yourself out there as a reformed character. If it's alleged that you've got a body count, you're just consistently fucking... You've just got people from the past. So, 
if it's out there and alleged that you've put into bed and put into bed, he's got family of course. who were still involved in the criminal world and he's had kids and them kids have grown up to be in the criminal world and mm. they just they won't do. let it go. No. Even though it's not to do with you, they just won't let it. So you can do everything you can to leave that world behind, but that world will never leave you. So I guess the message to the kids is just don't get involved in it in the first place. Involved, like, pretty do, much. Don't risk your don't risk your freedom. Mm. Your freedom is worth ten times more than any woman, any friend, any car, any amount of money. The minute you've lost your freedom, you're just finished. So for yourself, what what was your experience like in jail? Then that's just for the kids, like because yeah, those times then to now a bit different. But what was it like for you? It's not really different. The only different. Back then, mate, because I've been, I went through the care system. Right. So I was in the care system, mm. into the YP system, into the young offenders institutions, then into the into the convicts institutions. So 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, right through. Out of my 40 years in life, 50% behind bars. Right. My dear. Bang on 50% of my life has been behind bars. I got one long sentence, and because I was lucky enough not to get a thirty rep, mm. it gave me a, it gave me time. I was always getting acquitted, witness intimidation, witness not turning up, acquitted, 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 acquitted. Eventually, the law got me for long enough, mm. and on that long enough sentence, it gave me time to re-identify with myself. And if you don't re-identify with yourself at an early age, you're going to end up trying to re-identify yourself at a later age. Right. But the amount of layers that you've built up, every violent offence, every violent injury you've inflicted up someone, every mad shit you've been through, when you're, eventually you start peeling back the layers. At a certain age, automatically, you start searching yourself. And when you start searching yourself and you're pulling them layers off, it's very, very, very traumatic. Mm. But you've got to go through that process to re-identify with yourself and rebuild. And that's what I've done. So when you look at yourself coming out of jail in 2016, right? Yeah. And you look at yourself today, 2023. If you can compare yourself from then to now, what's the difference? Because people have seen that version of you. Well, I don't know, maybe the same version, but they've seen 2016, Darren G. And now they're seeing 2023 one. What's the difference, would you say, that you've learned about yourself in that time? I'm more passionate, mate. Mm. about the message of choose a life not a knife I'm more um, I'm, I haven't got any richer I haven't become any more successful mm. uh, I've just remained free and happy to be free I, I've got no criminal networks I've been very 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 sacrificial I'm a completely changed character who came out of prison with a 10 year plan and I'm only 7 years through that 10 year plan mm. Uh, and people are criticising me, oh, he's, doing, he's, he's got a message, but he's doing it wrong. No one else has got the message I've got. There is no one up and down the country that would take a stand against organised crime, which is the way I fucking have, mate. No one. Mm. The risks that come with it, the isolation that comes with it, the threat upon yourself and the people around you that comes with it. No one's ever been willing to do what I'm doing. I'm seven years into my 10-year plan. Mm. Got three years left of it. No one knows that plan. No one will know that plan. Mm. I'm working. See, a goal for me mm. might mean fuck all to you. Exactly. But to me, it's everything. So my first goal when I was released from prison was not to be a fucking knobhead and get breached on licence and end up back in jail for years. And you completed that. To me, that's a major achievement. And you, you ask anyone that's been in for a long time who just gets thrown into... I never got no cat, D. I've just come from a segregation straight into society. Wow. I weren't reintegrated the way you're meant to mm. for security reasons. Yeah, you're meant to go down in categories, right? You're meant to go C, it. D, home yeah. leaves. Yeah, I yeah. never got none of that process. Mm. I was released from a BCAT segregation unit straight into the hands of the law. I had a, um, a fucking, not a, you had a tag, not, not a, a GPS tracker put on. I was the first one in the country to have it placed on his ankle. So it's not a tag where you've got a perimeter and you've got to be in it. Right. It's everywhere and They're going. Tracking where you are. on it. Mm. So it's just a mess for me. But I've still managed to achieve the objectives that I've achieved. I've had two children. Lovely. I've stayed free. 
Yeah, beautiful. I've got my own little business set up. Although yeah. it's not popping off, I've it's had that business though. for three years. Yeah. You're on it. I'm doing something positive and righteous within the community of Liverpool. I'm pre- the amount of messages. The message of choose a life, not a knife is very, very powerful. Mate. Of course it is. Although it hasn't got the backing of the council or mm. the police because they can't tolerate me or, or they won't they won't embrace the fact that you've got a notorious young man from Liverpool mm. that was naughty has managed to shift it completely and end up on a completely opposite path. And they completely, they still don't, they still, still will not embrace this message because it's a G brother that's delivering it. Yeah. I mean, you have to give yourself a pat on the back, bro, because as we already said, like starting even from uh, being on license, like a lot of people breach license. And to be fair, it's not the easiest it's not the hardest of things to breach it's very easy to actually breach it you know you can just be in the perimeter or something happening and that's your license breached or when when you're when, conditions when you're a map of three to your four you can't get any more severe restrictions and conditions on you what restrictions were there every taxi or any car i got into i had to ring up and give the registration i had 55 people on me no contact list including my family my mother associates so when I'm in prison I have people coming up to visit me when I got out of prison then people that have been visiting me for 12 years including me brothers I was not allowed to associate with so they just isolated me I had to sign on three day, times a day I had a GPS tracker on me I had to sign on at the hostel three times a day and a police station the next day hostel the next day police station this, this is all week and if you don't, you're breaching it. Breached it. I had a curfew. I had a place of residence. It was just like I, I couldn't go here. I couldn't go there. Couldn't step foot in Liverpool. If I did go in Liverpool, they'd give me a map with a dedicated route that I had to take at a certain time. That route they'd give me would go right to enemy territory. Do you understand? So Crazy. it was... And with the shit and promoting, I've got the police because there's a lot of allegations and insinuations that we was involved in a spree of explosions within the city of Liverpool at targeted police stations in 2004. Mm. One of the explosions was described as the the biggest explosion on mainland Britain since the IRA ceasefire, and it was outside a, a nightclub called the 051. Right. So because of that, I've had um, crazy attention of certain agencies within the law, and they didn't want me on the streets. They didn't want... When I got my 18-year jail sentence, I've got off buzzing. I'm in strange ways buzzing. Got a release date. Within a week, I've got a letter under my door. The prosecutor are unhappy. They've referred your case to the Attorney General. They want the 18-year determinant sentence to turn to an 18-year recommendation. So that's how bad they wanted me to stay off the streets here, on it? Mm. The Attorney General just fucked them off in the end a month later. But that's the levels they were going to. So when I've got out, the police instantly. Although I was out of sight, my brothers weren't. And my brothers were carrying on rootless. So when I've got out and they've gone, it's like all their enemies are now my enemies. So it's just, it's messy for me. Mm. But it's the strength again. It would have been a lot easier for me to get out. The foundations that I'd done in 2000, which was solid, Got back on them and rebuilt. I could have done that easy. Could have mm. had the watches, the cars, the birds. Could have put a few to bed and fucking been a millionaire in a few years. Mm. To not to have the to have the strength to go. You know what? Fuck that and do what I'm doing. It's just it's just it's just pure strength, mate. Definitely. I mean, look, you're standing in what you believe. Exactly. You are what you are. You are who you are. Um, you've not gone back to jail, which is good because a lot of people reoffend. So. For you to do that long, um, you seem to have integrated back into society pretty well, I would say. You don't think so? No, no, no. No? I've not been allowed to. You wouldn't say so, no? No, no. I'm I'm like institutionalised. Really? In what in what sense? I've just become antisocial. Okay. Antisocial. I'll come here and do it. Is that a bad it. thing though? It is and it isn't. Like you might be antisocial. Yeah, because I you'd, am. But you'd have your loved ones around you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I can't have my love. I can't have my children living with me mm. because of the people I've offended. They could kick the door in and try to make me and end up doing my kids. Mm. So my, with what I've been doing over the last seven years, 
you'd have people relating me to um, Charleston White. You know that you know yeah. that you know that kid from America yeah, yeah. that's just gone fucking scattered. <laughs> He's so fucking cool. You've got people screaming that about me, but How I'm you not like him. How you're nothing like him? I'm not like. There's not. There's not one person sat in prison because of me. Yeah. Do you understand? Although an, although a fucking exposed major shit that's going on in the city of Liverpool, there is there's not one person that can say yeah he's in jail because of him. Mm. Not one. There's allegations and insinuations, but there's not one there to to confirm what the people are chatting about me. So yeah. I don't give a fuck. You know, I've done documentaries. I've, I've done the, there's some documentaries on Netflix, Panorama. Love it. I've been on social media consistently. Yeah. And it's all been about the message. It's never yeah. been about self gain. It's simply about looking at the youth who was like me, mm-hmm. 13, kicked out of school, start mixing with the older crowd, get dependent on cannabis. Once you get that dependence of cannabis, you're simply being used and abused by the elders. Mind this, take that there, I'll give you a little wade. The more gamer you are, the more they recognize what you can be used for. Yeah. If you're a game kid, heart, good driver of a car, Good driver of a motorbike, they're going to start pushing you into serious crimes that are going to get you killed and wiped off. Yeah, no, the message is important, and there's not much people speaking it, so I actually do appreciate that because obviously we've got a bit of your story. Um, we obviously don't know your whole story because there's not enough time for that. You know what I mean? You've lived the whole my, life. My story is so. very deep, mate. Yeah, yeah very, it's, very it's very deep. So even with that, as I said, I appreciate the message. I think there's definitely some pointers that people can take, even myself, because I'm not perfect. I've still got to learn. I'm not fully in control of myself. I'm much more in control than a lot of other people, but. There's still a lot for me to learn. What's next for you then? Where can people find you? Have you got any projects you've got coming up? Anything you're planning to start? I'm just focused on my 10-year plan. Mm. And um, what I've noticed is when you share your plan, I've learned. Yeah. When, you tell, you, when you tell people your aspirations and your dreams and what, you, what your next move is, they set out to sabotage it for or real. steal it. Definitely. So uh, my next plan is just to continue delivering the message, yeah. embrace me freedom we have got and the, the life we have got with me little me little daughter and my family. Yeah. And just continue to do what I'm doing. Hopefully opportunities will come my way. Yeah. And I'll take them and embrace them. Definitely. And hopefully um governments or like not even governments, but like, you know, the councils and stuff can take to it because there's clearly an issue going on in all these major cities. And I guess because it's not affecting them, they don't really give a shit. But they should definitely. We should. They should look into that, man. More, to be honest. I've, I've done it all, mate. I've, I've, you know, when I when I first got into it, when I was first doing it, I was lined up to go into certain schools around Merseyside. But when people are trying to kill you, you get issued with an Osman warning, which yeah, is yeah. now called a threat to life warning, and yep. that just jeopardizes you from going into any public space with children. Of course. And to be honest, I wouldn't like to risk me going to do a talk at an assembly and then something happens and some little rats in Liverpool because it's like next level in Liverpool and as I've, as as you said you mentioned before you got your little Reese, you got your little Olivia mm. they don't give a fuck who gets caught up in the crossfire yeah nice deep. If, if you're a, if you're a value target so if someone's put 50 grand on on me you'll have some little crackhead because that's what they are it's like weed is the 21st century crack mm. It just absolutely messes your psyche up. It definitely, can, it definitely. can you, you become violent when you were. You can be a pleasant kid. All of a sudden, you're mixing with that group. You get on the weed. You start blazing weed. You wake <laughs> up one morning without your weed. You call on your mother, slapper. Yeah, you don't even know why. You're getting angry. You're breaking yeah. windows and smashing doors, and that's what weed can do to you. Did you ever smoke when you came out? Yeah, they had to. Yeah, yeah, they had to, mate. I went through jail without smoking it, but then when when. You, I've got a big story, and although I've been on social media for a long time sharing bits of it, I've never told my full story in one segment or in one go. Mm-hmm. So no one knows the real story of, of what course. I've got through, where I've came from. But when I've got out and I've been promoting this and I've been offending these organised crime groups like the Kennington Cartel, the amount of fucking... I wouldn't call it victimisation, I'd call it targeting was horrendous, mate. And you know, if I didn't have something that I knew would subdue me emotions, I would have been lifed off. Mm. So it was like cannabis was me self-medicating myself to keep my 
energy levels subdued. Right. So I was letting things just go over my head. Whereas if I weren't smoking the weed, I wouldn't have let them things go over my head. There would have been a point with the amount of targeting and abuse and the fucking stalking and all that was happening. There would have been a point where I would have just went, you know what? Mm. And just ran out thinking it was Rambo. That and, makes sense. And everything that stood for would have just been fucking mm. ruined. So I got on the weed to self-medicate. And now we haven't touched the weed now for a year. That's good, man. You feel better? Well better. Yeah. Eating right, sleeping right. It's important. You've still got side effects off it. Mm. Don't get your shit in a twist, mate. You guess you're not a full kid. If you've been consuming cannabis for years and years and years and you stop, you're not a full shilling. Mm. You've got your little mad things going on with you. No, but at least you're honest and aware of it. It's the way self-aware, it is. Self-aware, bro. That's a lot of people that, that, are self-aware. That's the way it is. And I'm, I'm continuously telling the kids, mm. don't start smoking weed. Definitely. Within six months, you're a schizophrenic. No, nah, it's true. I've Expe- seen a lot of people go like that. Especially even... It's all right when you've got it daily. When you can keep that a little habit up, they don't, they don't like to call it an addiction. You can't right, be addicted to cannabis, but it's a fucking addiction. It is, and yeah. it's the biggest addiction of the 21st century to the youth. 100%. So when they're on that cannabis, it's all right when you've got it. Every day, every day, every day, every day. You know, when you go without it for three days, your head's gone. Mm. And anyone around you, you're breaking down with. You're speaking to them like shit. You're sweating your back out. You're not eating. You're not sleeping. Years ago, you used to have a spliff to get your head down. Mm. Now you've got to have a spliff in the morning to function. dinner. Yeah, it's not a joke. And the kids are hooked on it. I was very lucky I weren't really a heavy smoker. I've smoked before. I smoke here and there, but it's not something I do. It's not part of my daily, weekly, monthly. It's just if I'm with someone and they've got it, then I might take a tote. But past that, it doesn't go... Or if I go on holiday, to be fair, when I go on holiday, I'll I'll smoke. But I, I've not got that addictive personality. So I've never... Like, I went Barcelona in May and I smoked out there. But that was it. And I never came home and thought, you know what, let me go and get a 3-5. Like, no, nah, it never happened. Yeah, well, that's what that's what most of the kids are doing now, basically. Mm. What I was doing, self-medicating. Mm. You know, they're seeing a lot of shit. They see, they're going through a lot of shit on the streets. They're witnessing friends be murdered. They're witnessing dads going into prison. And uh, It's like they're self-medicating themselves. Yeah. But they're not realising the consequences later on. No, definitely. Honest, you lose your fucking marbles on it. Definitely. No, it needs to be spoken of. So now, once again, I appreciate you coming down. I'm Sweet happy that. I was able to do that. And guys, even think about this. As I said... I first got in contact with Darren in like 2020 and as he said, he just literally wanted me to cover his bloody travels, bro. And I couldn't do it. I'll be honest, I couldn't. Like, I can't remember what I had in my account, but I couldn't do it. Um, it's not to say I'm some rich millionaire now, no, but it's just like, everything is a journey. Do you get what I mean? Life's yeah, a journey. You know you know what though, at the same time, mate, you was only just starting off in the podcast exactly. world and you were a young kid. Mm. But I never, said a, I never said anything different to you than what I'd said to... English, else, yeah. Atwood, any other podcast around there. Mm. They were all told the same. Train ticket or travel expenses, mm. that's it. And that's fair though, because you're coming down, bro. I, 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 yeah, I don't earn. So so basically, I've asked you, uh, it was for petrol money. Yeah. But I've stayed in the hotel last night mm. and you're not, I've, I've, I'm not even considering asking you for that. Yeah. So I haven't gained absolutely nothing from this other than the opportunity to speak to the youth about choose a life, not a knife. No, definitely. I really do hope there is some kids that can take it on. I know it's hard, especially when you're in those situations and you've got, like, it's real life, like, people actually dying and things actually going on around you. It's a hard one. I mean, I just hope there's just more things. But definitely you are helping and making an impact. So, no, I appreciate you coming down. Sammy, thank you. Guys, I hope you enjoyed. Um, It will be on Apple Podcasts. It's on Spotify. TikTok, all social medias. Um, you're on TikTok, right? What are you yeah, on? Yeah, I'm Dad and G live feed. So yeah. That's all I do, just lives on TikTok. Dad and yeah. G live feed on TikTok and Instagram. I'm not on YouTube, but there's loads of content out there yeah. on YouTube. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. No, so make sure to follow Darren, keep in lock with that. It's actually funny. I saw you was on TikTok live with an um, OnlyFans girl or something like that. I just, I, I just, <laughs> on that TikTok, it's, yeah. it's boss. You, people just come from all over the world and try to get in your live. And you just I need accept. to try it. I need to try it. You're a, try it, mate. You'll accept. Mm. And then you'll have battles. You'll have your team. They'll have their team. And they gift them. Yeah. They gift them. You're on it. So you can earn a living. Yeah. Literally And for me, a person in my... Unless I become self-efficient, mm. I can't really fall into mainstream employment due to the lifestyle I'm now in. 
Yeah. If I could, I would. You know, nah. but I can't. Definitely appreciate you, bro. Wish you the best with the future. And yeah, nah. Appreciate you coming down, man. Peace out, man. Cheers.